The friends you make in the mountains, as you know, are friends for life. They're a different type of friend. You share something very special with them. My best friends over the course of my life are those I met climbing, and those relationships and bonding just lasts forever. So I think I've known my entire life that the way to be happy is to chase what you love. And I'm finally doing that now. I'm 40 years old. I left the desk job over four years ago now, which was a scary transition to make at the time. But I just didn't love it. I was there because my brain told me I needed to be there. My bank account told me I needed to be there. But I wasn't my best self. I wasn't the happiest I could be. Being in the mountains is incredibly important to me. And, it's, um, and I recognize that and I feel that it just feeds all aspects of myself. When you're up in an alpine route, it's literally just you and your partner and the mountain and the task at hand. And so all that other noise kind of drops away and you're left with just kind of a pure line and experience on the day. This is my 40th year on planet Earth. I really surprised myself doing the traverse in the summer and it just kind of fueled my fire for, well, what's this challenge like in the winter? doing it with friends that I enjoy spending time with and that I trust. Yeah, it's a great way to celebrate turning 40. The Bull Valley is full of legends. You know, I find it inspiring to see that guys who are in their 60s and 70s are still out there getting after it. Jack Firth, Chick Scott, Charlie Locke. And they've really inspired a generation to push their limits. In 1962, uh, I decided that I wanted to go to the mountains and I, I signed on with a youth hostel association trip to Parker Ridge um, near the Columbia Ice Fields and uh, um, it just changed my life. It was like I stepped out of a, a confined box into a world of, of magic, of, of mountains and beauty and adventure. My name is Chick Scott. Um, I was born in Calgary 70 years ago, and for the last 55 years, I've devoted myself to skiing and mountain climbing. My name is Charlie Locke. I'm aged 70. I was born and raised and, uh, and lived and worked and played in the Bow Valley. Well, Mount Rundle, I mean, it's a sort of dominant mountain in the valley, isn't it? When you see Mount Rundle, you see Banff. Uh, it's the icon of Banff, of Banff National Park. The great climb, however, on Rundle, I think, is the Traverse. I think Mount Rundle is perfectly built for a long Traverse. When you look at it just from down below, you think, what the hell? You know, that's a great bloody Travis across there. It's a great introduction to people coming to the mountains from the east and you look up to the, your left or while you're traveling west and, and seeing the spectacular nature of those series of buttresses. Canadian Rockies are very, very special and very scenic and very easy to get to in relation to many other mountain ranges in the world. Things are really dynamic here in the Rockies and you get those first few sunny days. You're, you're choosing to go at this in a, in a time of year which is not ideal. And that's okay, give her. But just discretion may be the better part of valor at some point up there.
Rundle as a mountaineering objective is long. It's just such a long way with so many peaks, you know. I don't know how many K it is, let's call it 20K maybe. 20K doesn't sound that far, but by the time you go up and down and around and over and under and through and swim through a bunch of snow, it's gonna be a really, really long day. Mount Rundle isn't a trail run either. You know, there are places on there where if you fall off, you're gonna die. So Ryan and I currently hold the summer record and we just thought the natural extension is doing it when there's snow on the mountains. I mean, it's like a completely different traverse. The snow is deep, the wind moves it around. You never know what you're gonna get. So for us to go in there in winter conditions, we're really going into the unknown. You know, same mountains that we see today are the same mountains that people would have seen five, 10, 100,000 years ago. And people would have stared up at them the same way. But they're also alive in a sense in that any time you go up in a mountain, you can have a different experience. You'll have different weather, you'll have different seasons, you'll have a different rock moving on you, you'll have different ice in different places. So they're very much alive. What I love about mountain experiences is no two times are ever going to be the same. The snow up there was very faceted, lots of slabs. And as the day progressed and the temperatures warmed up and the st sun started hitting all the slopes, it just became more unstable, started getting really sugary, it just was not instilling any confidence. Going up the high point of Mount Rundle, which we call Peak 7, that was really when we got into the, the steep stuff, the, the tough terrain. It got very craggy, there were a lot of ledges, and those were the first consistently steep snowfields that we got into. When Simon fell off and an ice axe came flying at my face, that was a little bit scary. I'm okay, are you okay? Did I cut you? Ice axe in the hand. I know. I knew that coming into this route that there would be moments that were scary. Ryan? Are you okay there, Ryan? Can you hang there for a sec? Okay. I kind of started realizing that I was getting no traction and I could not get anything that felt solid, yeah. no matter how hard I tried. And then I just held myself there because every time I moved, I was just sliding and I knew that if I slid more than a foot that I was going to go basically all the way down the side of the mountain. And I caught my heart kind of in my throat. I said, yeah, I need help, like, now. After the experience of me on the slab, the mortality and precariousness of our situation kind of hit home. We're all going to end up dead. What's the big hurry? Don't climb for the cameras and don't climb for fame. Climb for love. In 11 and a half hours, we banged off nine summits, but we also managed to lose our nerve. Enough was enough at that point. The mountain was just getting too dangerous. We decided to pull the plug and head out through the valley. Great. Right. Really? I say we, we walk it out real safe like. Now, we're, now we get safe. That's the way it is with life. Not all your plans work out. As long as you're having a good time and you come back safe um, and you stay friends with, with your partner, climb and ski for the joy of the moment, the joy of your friends and the beauty of the place. Have a genuine experience. I don't have any reservations about missing the final two peaks. Bumping up against this feeling of vulnerability just really allows all the other aspects of your life to just shine with color that's a bit more vivid. What's changed, I guess, over my 40 winters is just my risk tolerance. It's not at all costs anymore. Friendships, enjoyment, experience, that's what I'm after. I'll never complain about a full day out. You know, when you start a day with a headlamp and end a day with a headlamp on, you've had a pretty good day in the mountains. It will be an adventure, that is a guarantee. It'll be a memorable day, and the memorable days are the ones that count.